I guess going back to human history, human culture, um, do you believe that having a large organized unifying system, whether that is religion or anything else, is necessary to have a healthy economy? Or is that not necessary at all? Uh, yeah, there has to be something. I mean, so there's been very few societies, if if any, in world history that haven't had something, uh, you know, tying it together more so if anything else, it's hard to have a state and state ideology without um, like so yeah. some some way so, of say gaining state legitimacy, something like that, which is all which is all kind of either, you know, kind of ideological or something like that it can be religion, it doesn't have to be religion. You know, it can be secular ideology works just fine um, for for many of these things. But it and, and it doesn't obviously have to be shared by everyone. You know, in the U.S. today, we're you know, we're more, I think, polarized than just about any other time in our in our history. And a lot and, and not most of the polarization, though, clearly some of it's religious. Um, a lot of it's not. Um, and um that doesn't actually the polarization probably doesn't uh, almost certainly does not contribute to um economic growth but it's it's there's been no society that has really grown in human history without some type of ideology again and actually most of it's not really religious you know if we look at what the you know almost all of the growth that has happened in world economic history has happened in the last 200 years most you know there have been societies in the past that have grown but they've kind of reverted um you know, we talked about, you know, these, say the Islamic Golden Age, something like that, you know, but but that went back, you know, the Roman Empire, there was, a, there was you know, what, you know, I know you've had Jack Goldstone on, he calls growth efflorescences, you know, that happened, but then there was a reversion. Yeah. There's been no yeah. reversion in the last few hundred years, and there's no real reason to believe there should, there, there would be a major reversion unless, you know, there's a massive climate or, you know, nuclear warfare or something like that. Um, and... And yeah, all of those societies have had something, you know, the, you know, ideology is something that I think is just part of a society in a sense, you know, you're going to have something holding societies together, you know, and say in the US, it would have been at least to some degree beliefs in say democratic norms that hold the government together, or, you know, some something along these lines, you know, there are ideologies that do contribute to economic development. But again, mo since most of the growth has happened in you know, in a setting in the last few hundred years where if anything, religion's been on decline. I, I don't really think, you know, where we can really pinpoint religion as as a driving factor, um, even though, again, you know, my, my own research would suggest that if anything, it was kind of the shift away from government interference, or not interference, but, but government, or rather religious authorities playing religious a, a, role, a, a major role in government that was... Um, has been Hindering has been growth. kind of key to the growth of many societies getting rid of that yeah so i yeah. guess like a follow-up question or even a different question is so we have we have the state already established how how polarized or divided can we be before the economy underlying that state decides to collapse because we mentioned america right we're becoming more and more polarized thanks to i guess in part technology um, it's easy to access information, but like at, at what point can we, yeah, just at like what point does polarization become too much and then uh, economy fragments? Well, this is, I mean, this is a key question that um, there's been a lot of political economy work done on this. Um, and this is something where, I mean, it's uh, it, it, it to the extent that polarization affects economic development, it's mainly through politics. You know, the politics would be the channel. And yeah, it's it's and it's conflict, right? So conflict is the thing that you're really worried about. Um, internal conflict as being something that can really just not just stifle economic growth, but cause a major growth reversal, um, where you get you know at the worst case something like civil wars. But um, you know, there's more there's more kind of subtle, you know, not not even necessarily violent conflict that can happen um, that really. You know, subjugate certain certain groups or people with certain beliefs when one group gets an upper hand and this happens in polarized societies uh more often so yeah i mean you know the, the answer is going to differ by society but there's certainly as, as i think you're getting at here a degree of polarization once you get beyond that point it's going to be bad for economic development again and then the 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 real causal pathway there is via politics and what politics can reign 
like essentially like a disequilibrium between like polarize the fact of polarize the level of polarization in its role in politics and if you enter that it can kind of lead to market or country failure you can yeah 